All right, everyone, it's time to talk about 8chan, BitChute, 8chan's founder selling out completely. Uh, something that I normally wouldn't have talked about because I'm a 4chan user. I like the, I don't mind having centralized moderation on a site when that centralized moderation, even though people constantly bitch about it, by and large is pretty hands off. You have to post some really out there stuff or off topic things like porn on a non-porn thread in order to get banned from 4chan. Like, I go on B and shit post with the Andy Six log stuff. I, I go to Politically Incorrect and I aggregate news in part from it. I never have any problem with these things. Now, uh, it's interesting. There's a link in the description, uh, archived, of course, because I don't want to give any fucking ad revenue there, from the Daily Dot. At first, I didn't realize this, but the author of this article is none other than the founder of 8chan, Brennan himself. Uh, Frederick Brennan. You'll, he's known as other words that I can't use probably on YouTube without getting banned. Uh, anyway, he's writing a hit piece about Bitshu. So it's time for a response. See, un unlike some people who are disingenuous, I actually would rather communicate with the person who runs a website before I trash them. Uh, what the article insinuates is, is manifold. First, that BitChute is full of Nazis and extremists, and I'm going to get into why this is funny. For those of you who don't know anything about 8chan, 4chan, sort of that kind of culture, it's hilarious. The, re the reasons are, are vast why this is funny to me. And secondly, that BitChute isn't actually P2P. Now, on the second token, that's explained more easily. I spoke to Ray because I needed to. In order to make this video, I needed to know sort of the ins and outs of why that would be. It is true, in part, that P2P is less common on serving videos at the moment on Bitchu. The reason, though, which is not stated by the article, is because they are transitioning away from WebTorrent to other things. So yeah, if you're doing that, it's go if you chose that moment to do your analysis of the website, yeah, it's going to look like it's not fully P2P. But there's no problem, and the idea that BitChute ever warranted itself as totally decentralized and unable to moderate content, where does it say that anywhere on the website? It is partially decentralized, it is free speech tech, it is alt tech in the literal sense. Nobody has ever said, as far as I know, nobody including us libertarians have ever proclaimed that in order for a website to be acceptable and truly free speech, you have to have zero moderation and let everything get put on the site. No, there are certain things that are pr it's perfectly fine if a site wants to remove illegal content. How do you do that without some form of moderation? How do you remove, how do you remove child exploitation or animal abuse or something that would be illegal as snuff films under U.S. law? It, you'd get your site taken down. What's the point of trying to build a free speech site if it can't even exist? At the bare minimum, things that are against the law must be able to be removed from the site. So I don't know what his fucking problem is. This is ironic. Because keep in mind who Frederick Brennan really is. He's the founder of 8chan back in 2013. He creates a website. He said at the time, well, 4chan's great. Oh, this is wonderful. You know, I can get my porn there and beat off, maybe break a finger in the process. Uh, the problem is there's centralized moderation. Well, I don't like that. I want the, the, it to be more user-based. Users can create boards and, and do what they want to do and will basically have hands-off moderation for the most part. Now, that's to his credit. I used 8chan occasionally, but I always liked 4chan more. It was simply more usable for me, and more familiar. <laughs> Again, uh, the odds of getting banned on 4chan, unless you go out of your way to get banned, uh, fairly low. And they've cleaned up the site a little, but it's still pretty much a mess, which I like. I like the chaos there. Especially on B, which unfortunately is devolving into a porn board. Keep those log posting threads coming. Andy6 is the key mode that's going to save B, trust me. He, more recently divorced himself from running the site, and then he threw it under the bus entirely and said, well, 8chan is actually evil. Yeah, my, my creation is like Frankenstein's monster. And he decided to turn his back on all of the people who had begun to enjoy using his shit that he had developed. 8chan gets bullseyed off the internet entirely. They've got uh, some other moniker that they go under now uh, that where they can't be censored the same way. All because of bullshit. What happened is that the FBI, I believe, or some group was investigating them for child-related content. Now, that was dropped. He never got prosecuted. There was never any prosecution. There was never any problem. And in part, it was also about that dude who supposedly dropped, like, some... Uh, which Was it the Christchurch killer or something? Dropped a manifesto, supposedly, on 8chan. They found it wasn't actually the case. It was bullshit. It's interesting. Let me tell it this way. It's interesting how he and others have a problem with 
content, like if it's on BitChute, BitChute's is full of Nazis. 8chan's full of Nazis. But Salon can literally promote pedophilia. Nobody talks about deplatforming them, that's fine. Twitter is full of weirdos doing weird shit. It's perfectly fine, nobody has a problem with it. Shooters and terrorists can post material on Facebook. Hours later, it's still there. Perfectly fine. But if something appears on BitChute, if one person says Hitler on the whole site, all of a sudden, it's just a Nazi repository. Now, he could have bothered to talk to people like myself. I'm the largest user by subscriber total on BitChute. Or he could have talked to Sargon. He's got several large channels there. By the way, people can't even categorize us. They think that I'm alt-light, as opposed to a libertarian. Becca Lewis and all these other morons think that I'm alt-light or something. They've literally, they've categorized Sargon as a special case, separate from the thinkery, and they put him in two totally different categories. He's both alt-light and part of the intellectual dark web at the same time. He's got like split personality or something. The largest users on the site are not a laundry list of ma Nazi, it's a laundry list of deplatformed libertarians. Myself, Sargon, BPS, he's not a Nazi. He's, a, he's arguably alt-light after a fashion. Infowars, you think Infowars is, is the Third Reich? They're, they're the new uh, Goebbels press. No, they're not. It's a bunch of fucking horse shit. And Brennan knows it. He, he's not a dumb dude. Look, he designed HN. He knows that this is bullshit. He's doing it for some ulterior motive. What I think is that he's trying to get back in. He, he realized, hey, all this shit is destroying my career. I'm good. I know how to code and I know how to type on a keyboard. So I should be, you know, I should be like, t uh, uh, you know, I should be like Moot who abandoned 4chan and went off to go work for Google, probably has millions of dollars in a, and a penthouse right now, and keeps to himself. At least he'd never badmouthed his own website after he left. But of course, you got this dude. He's, he's literally wheelchair bound. Uh, so, he, I mean, he can't exactly work as a chef, if you know what I'm saying. So he said, well, you know, this is kind of my job for life. What should I do? Maybe I should try to redeem myself. The lame stream just defeated me. They destroyed my website. They forced me to throw it under the bus. Uh, you know, they, they tried to drag me through courts and stuff like that. They tried to, you know, fuck me in, in the ass because they wanted to destroy me because my idea was competing with them. And that's what happens with 4chan. It's what happens with YouTube content creators, all tech. BitChute, Gab, and Trends, and, and all of these things, Minds.com, DLive, Subscribestar, we're a threat to the lamestream. The lamestream has, has a lot of political and legal connections, and so they constantly hold content creators and the designers of these sites and ideas to standards that they themselves are not held to. Twitter is not held to a standard whereby the site might get deplatformed and the plug pulled if somebody posts illicit material on Twitter. Google is not prosecuted for hosting links to material that under U.S. law in some cases is illegal, infringes copyright and so forth. They make some effort to remove the material, just the same as BitChute would, just the same as any of these other sites would. They conform to U.S. law. Gab openly proclaims, hey, if it's illegal under U.S. law, don't fucking put it on our site. We'll kick you off and remove it but they get held to a different standard because they don't have an army of accountants and lawyers to protect them. The same is true of content creators. I do the same thing that a talking head does on Fox or CNN, but I don't have a billionaire protecting me from, from, this, from censorship. I don't have a billionaire stumping for me if a social uh, media platform decides I'm wrong think. That's essentially how it works. Our power is in numbers and in interaction, not, not in our, our money, not in our power as far as politics goes. As far as Brennan goes, he threw his own fucking site under the bus, pissing off everybody who ever used HN in the process. He is, he's become a walking mockery to what would have been, and was before, a form of early free speech tech. HN was. It's essentially primordial alt-tech when you really think about it. He decided to flee the battlefield. And worse than that, it's one thing to say, well, I can't take it anymore. I'm fucking quitting. I'm tired of being bitched at by CNN. I'm tired of being bitched at by a host, by a, a site registrar. I'm tired of ad services being stripped from my site. I'm tired of my bank telling me that it can't uh, let me access my money because I'm being investigated by, by the nation of Botswana for breaking the law. I can understand that. It can get a little overwhelming at times when you got people breathing down your neck. Even smaller content creators have that problem. But to turn around 
and defame other alt tech sites that are trying to do what you were unsuccessful at doing and badmouth your own website, pissing off your own fans in the process, totally disgracing them, totally insinuating they're a bunch of losers. Yeah, that, that, that's wrong, dude. So I think that we should say fuck the Daily Dot. They shouldn't have run the article. And uh, screw this bullshit. It is bullshit. It's not even true. Again, the point about WebTorn is, is meaningless. It's irrelevant in the context of them transferring away from WebTorn. And number two, again, the idea that the website skews towards extremism is totally wrong. Go and see some other channels on the site. I'm subscribed to dozens of channels on there. The amount of must national socialist or ma white supremacist content that I actually see on BitChute is very small. Most of it's libertarian. It's about free speech and shit like that. That benefits everyone. Yeah, communists benefit from free speech too. It allows them to say commie things. That doesn't mean I'm a commie defender. It means that I'm a classically liberal fucking libertarian lover of the First Amendment. So fucking sue me. Oh wait, yeah, at some point somebody probably will try to sue these sites. We'll see which ones stand and which ones fall. Gab made it through the fire. Not unscathed, but they've got trends now, so they're sitting there chuckling at Matt Drudge. One of the biggest fucking losers of the entire year. That's about all. Peace out.